412. Yep. Do it again? Nope, just 412. I got it. Okay. Uh, all commissioners are present, as is Mike Sullivan, Eric Redmike, and David Upson, and Eli Anderson. So, first item on the agenda is the agenda of the email questions. And that is the agenda. Uh, minutes of prior meetings. We have minutes from the meeting of August 21st. Uh, is there a motion for two minutes? We'll move. Okay. Second. Second. All favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The minutes are approved. I have the eight I have the eighteenth and the twenty-sixth in my hard time. Yeah, no. Yep. Uh, okay, so we have minutes from the September twenty-sixth. Is there a second? Okay. All right. And then one there was one from nine eighteen before that. that I didn't... Oh yeah, well, I that. there's two sets. There's two sets in my copy. I saw two. Okay, this copy has one, 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 the one that I was looking at online. Okay, so also minutes from nine eighteen. Yeah. Um. Okay, I just want to. I didn't. I, for whatever reason, I didn't I just take a picture. Is there a motion for three minutes? Three minutes. Well, I guess I participated by Zoom. I can still. I move to approve the minutes. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Is there any discussion? Uh, all in favor? Aye. Um. Any post? Okay, none of those minutes are approved as well. Okay. Sorry about that. So that takes us to public comment. Eric. Hi. Um, I just like to I, in the past there was uh there has been a discussion about the flood board receiving the um the manager's report. Um oh, yeah. it'd be lovely if that could like happen. I don't see why not. Yeah, that yeah. my my mistake. I remember we talked about we it. We did talk about it. That was our intention after I was presented to it. I should have followed up and make sure it was. Do you want the whole packet or do you want to see it? Uh I don't I don't really know. I think um, you're I think what it's easier just to send you the whole packet. Is, be, is it electronic? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We yes. get we get it um, you know, a few days before the meetings at the last time. No, it would be yeah, that'd be great because I was just noticing looking at the minutes from your regular September. No, those weren't. Posted. Yeah, those weren't posted. It was the <laughs> no, it was just the agenda. It looked like there was some yellow line discussion in the one of those September meetings. It was an our last meeting. Yeah. So. Would have been. Yeah, and I think I was I'm not sure how to. How to Get the money to pay for it. Yeah. 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 I, I think that was a little bit there other had a lot of the other. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I don't know yeah. if there was much in that report. It was so oh. bad. Right okay. But just in general. Yeah. No, it makes sense. I thought that I didn't know. Yeah. 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 Item on the agenda is market and purchase power strategy with Wolka offline for the foreseeable future and the audit report follow ups on the VEPSA data with Ken Mellon, but Ken is not here. That was last meeting. Well, I'm looking at. Did I give you the wrong binder? I'm sorry. I think I did, Lynn. I think that's what the problem I'm sorry. Okay. That makes sense. I'll share with you. Eli, um, so, yeah, we got to crank Eli first because he has a hard stop here shortly. Okay. So, um, so yes, you should have asked Eli to be agenda. Yeah. Um, but is there any objection? 
I'm having a real trouble hearing anyone other than Mike. So if maybe Mike wants to delay any questions. All right. Is it coming over your phone, Mike? Or your no. Do I? Model, Audio. Model setting. Yeah. And put both of those as an echo. Go, go down to that. This guy? Both of them, yeah. That one. Go to the echo canceling speaker. Polycom down to the bottom. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then do the same thing and then bring both of the volume things all the way up. There you go. <laughs> you should be all set. That battery line? You're muted. You got to turn. Uh, yeah, I think I can hear most people now, but um, I'll let you know if I don't hear anything. And then maybe someone can relay it. I think it's working now. So I asked you to join us for a follow-up to uh, Lynn's inquiry last month that you and I talked briefly about. Um, and I did share, you know, that we had already uh, all talked about this, including with the select board at our last joint meeting and that there were some, or at least one open item. And uh, that's kind of what we're talking about. The select board, HED, board of commissioners, and the statute position uh, from your perspective, is that right, Lynn? That's correct. And, and we, unfortunately, we have Eric Remick here, we have Ollie here, so we can talk about, you know, the, the, the interpretation and how to apply it to what we have to do now in the way of accepting, renewing our line of credit, getting these new loans, how, how we walk through all that. Okay, did you want me just to, so we start talking or were there specific questions? I think one well, the question. specific question is who has to approve loans? Does it matter what the amount of the loan is? Does it matter what the tenor of the loan is? Does it matter whether it's a loan or a bond? Is, uh, it, is it is can HED do this on its own? Does it need the select board's approval? <clears throat> Does it need the town's approval? All of those sorts of things, and what the basis for your conclusions are. Okay. That, that's uh, all. <laughs> um and we have so, we have discussed this before. So you got five minutes now. Yeah. Uh, well, okay. So the really important critical part of this discussion is that we're talking about revenue borrowing so electric utility revenue borrowing um under subchapter two of chapter 53 and title uh title 53 i got that right oh no title 24 um and that's specifically public utility borrowing um i um the select board has complete control over general obligation borrowing, which means that it's both borrowed, um, it's secured with the full faith and credit of the town, um, and is usually paid for through tax revenue. So that's something that's completely different under this, um, under this conversation. Um, whether or not voters need to approve it is a separate question. Um, there are when it's a um, general obligation borrowing, it's often determined by the length of the note being a year or longer, sometimes by the purpose. With a revenue borrowing, it depends on how much it is in relation to the assets of the utility. So um, the threshold in sort of the revenue bond utility revenue bond borrowing is 50 percent of if it's going to be for more than 50 percent of the utilities assets then the voters need to approve it uh, there is a similar type of threshold for if the public utility commission needs to um, approve the borrowing and that is a similar type if it's a percentage of the utilities assets um, the other important part of, so it depends. Um, utility revenue borrowing is a different animal than a general obligation borrowing of the town. I think from the select board 
standpoint, um, the revenue borrowing does not um, contribute to the overall town's borrowing capacity because it's not secured with uh, the tax base. It's secured by electric utility revenue. And when you get into this question of uh, who has the authority uh, between the electric commission and the select board to authorize the borrowing, well, that's a bit of an unknown question. There's certainly the language in the statute says the legislative body. So you have to interpret that as which is the legislative body of the utility. Um, I don't believe the select board creates legislation or, or rules or policies for the electric department. That's not been my experience. So my best interpretation of the statute is that the legislative body for the purpose of electric department revenues is the electric commission. But that being said, I'm just interpreting this. There's ultimately the authority is the Vermont Supreme Court and that Vermont Supreme Court has certainly never answered this question. So I certainly think there's an opportunity here to figure out between the electric commission and the select board exactly where you find you're comfortable with um, as far as who has the authority to issue uh, revenue notes on behalf of the electric utility. I think I approached the memo from a very unlikely scenario as if there was a dispute between the electric commission and the select board as to whether notes should be issued. And in that instance where there's a dispute, who ultimately has the authority? And I would side with the electric commission because they're the ones who have the fiduciary responsibility to maintain the electric department assets and to make sure they're serving the ratepayers. So I think ultimately that's where sort of the conclusion in the memo comes from, but I just want to sort of restate that I'm interpreting this and I'm just an attorney. It's based on the language and the statutes and my experience, but the you know, I'm not the one who makes a decision. There's you really a court would determine what the answer to this question is. And there's really never been any court that's ever weighed in on this question. So. Elon, I, I have a question because I think the statute refers to the legislative body of the municipality. And it defines legislative body in, in the Vermont statutes. Um, in the section that I saw now, maybe, maybe that's not the relevant section, but it means the mayor or the relevant thing is it's the town select board. It's the president and trustees of the village, it's legislative bodies of a group of municipalities, but it, it specifically calls out the select board. And that, that's where my question came from. Uh, because yes, utility borrowing is different. It's not secured by the town's tax base and secured by the utilities assets and their things in there, but I, I'm confused if the stat, I mean, it looks like a pretty plain vanilla definition to me. And that's why I don't know why it would be interpreted to be something else. Yeah, there's no definition for a legislative body in chapter 53, I believe, or at least in sub chapter two that we're talking about. And Which, I don't believe that the- Excuse me, can I get the citation down when you, when you, it's subchapter two of what? Uh, chapter 53 of Title 24. That's the public utility borrowing section of the general municipal indebtedness chapter. So you're saying that, that because it's not defined there in well, that I, section. Um, I, okay. That's not the only reason. The main reason is because of the context in which it's used, which is purely for the purpose of borrowing for electric, well, it can be more than electric utility, but in our context here, electric utility purposes, and it's very specifically tied to the revenue, being a pledge of revenue of the electric utility. So again, Trying to answer the question, if in the unlikely scenario, you know, a couple of scenarios you could imagine is if the electric commissioners decided there was a project that was necessary um, and was required under their public utility responsibilities, your Title 30 responsibilities, and the select board just 
wouldn't give its approval of it, would the commission be allowed to borrow? I think in that situation, it would have to uh, in order to meet its responsibilities under Title 30. And on the other hand, could the select board pledge the revenue of the electric department for a non-utility project against the wishes of the electric commission? And again, I don't think they could. So I don't think that, I'm not saying those are situations that would actually happen, but I'm trying to sort of play out the, you know, the instance in which there might not be agreement between the commission and the select board as to um, whether or not to, to do the borrowing or to use the revenue as security for something. I don't remember the exact word, but the other piece of this that we've talked about a couple of times in the past is the town charter that calls for the select board to delegate their responsibilities and authority to the commissioners to run the municipal utility. But I, I do want to add that I think this is a one of the, we now identified at least three issues, which really should be the subject of some common understanding, an MOU or something like that, between <laughs> the select board and the electric commission, because it's not unreasonable for the select board to want to know what kind of borrowing is happening in the name of the town, even if it's not being, you know, it's not being secured by the tax base. So... Um, again, I don't, I don't, I don't think a, like a, a like a conflict between the two is the likely scenario here. I can't imagine the select board really ever disagreeing with a project like this. So there's it's definitely an area where there can be some common understanding of how to approach this type of borrowing. But I think the question that I've been presented with is in that unlikely scenario, if there was a disagreement. Who would have the authority? And, and Lynn, if it's okay, one one thing to uh, I think is obvious to everyone, but I just want to put it out there as a perspective on the situation, and this is especially for, for the town. Um, when we went through the rate case application, the filing, um, they the response we got, they denied about it for the large part of our two thirds, two thirds of it, and the response. Was Basically, that we are we are inappropriately financing capital projects from our operating income. So our operating our annual operating revenue. Interestingly, for many years now, we in the years I've been around, and probably before that and that, we've been really proud of the fact that we haven't borrowed. We felt we were fiscally responsible. We have relatively low borrowings in total a long time ago. Mm -hmm. And so we were really proud that whenever we had sources of cash with that one and other things that it would go toward capital. And so we wouldn't be incurring borrowing. We thought that was fiscal conservatism. The PUC or the, the public the DPS. Deep, yeah, whatever it was, came back to us, came back to us and said, no, 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 no. Get debt. Yeah, you need to finance capital projects with debt. Yeah, which is very heavy-handed of them. Yeah, very. Well, yeah. I think the rationale, yeah. in some sense, is that if you're making a long-lived investment, it's not going to just benefit the current rate payers, it's going to benefit the rate payers down the road, and so the cost of it should be spread out over time among all the rate payers. The irony in being ding, though, is that when we were spending the settlement money, that was a loss to the pass rate payers. Yeah. So the closest right. to the past rate payers that you can get now. would be the current rate payers. And we were obliged to try and benefit payers with the money that we collected from the settlement. So and it, turned out we actually, it, it turns out we actually did benefit the current rate payers because we used up most of that settlement money in just uh, making some the insurance wise, the budget, budget shortfalls when all the costs went through the roof, and we hadn't gotten a rate increase, we subsidized that and it brought down the settlement. So that wasn't what we had intended, but it accomplished it. And now we have to borrow for, unless we get a, a surprisingly large rate increase, it doesn't seem possible, we're going to have to borrow to do 
everything, and we're even going to probably have to draw on the line of credit frequently as we go through different seasons. So they, they're really putting us in handcuffs to operate right on the edge with debt coming in with a line of credit, with debt coming in everything we do in the way of capital. And I think that's very heavy handed at that. To benefit the current rate payers. That's, <laughs> that's why, right? That's the reason why. To benefit yeah. the current rate payers. Yeah. That's why they want to. Yeah, pay later. Yeah. It's, it's sort so of it's the opposite of what we do to the town. We do what you were doing previously. We try to yeah. save in the capital fund for taxes yeah. that we know about. Yeah. And it increases our lead. That's just like so yeah, well, it's not very yeah, 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 yeah. so, timely because the interest just went through the roof. So I saw well, that Jack Eli's got to go. Here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well no, I, where we landed with Eli last time was you all needed to work on an MOU with councils and everybody, and that kind of fell off my radar. I don't know did it with it, Dave, but we all talked about it that last joint meeting downstairs. Yeah, we have I think draft. that's where he's well, yeah, you do, yeah, right. we have a draft. Can I just ask one quick question for when you like so in the event that uh there's debt that exceeds the 50% of the assets of the utility, who where does that vote? Is that vote through the all the towns where the ratepayers no, or is that just in Hartman? Just in Hartman. Yes, correct. Yep. And, and that's the only time is when it's over 50 percent yeah. yeah. large number yeah again again i don't know what the logic is um for why they need the vote at all other than it's just probably tradition but essentially all of the security the, the security so if if the electric department were to default on the loan the only recourse the bank has um, would be to basically seize the revenue of the electric department to pay for it. So um, that's why you say it's secured with the revenue of the electric department. It's obviously paid for with the electric department revenue. And then if there was a default, the bank could not come to the town and say, hey, you have to impose a generally applicable tax in the town of Hardwick to pay off this debt. That's what they would do if it was a general obligation bond. All the bank could do is say, all right, uh, we have the right to, to collect the revenue directly, pay off our debt, and then whatever is left over, Hardwick Electric Department, you have to pay your expenses. So that's the big difference between the revenue borrowing and the general obligation. The vote is of the town residents, the voters in town. Um, and yes, the threshold on a utility borrowing is 50% of the utility's assets. If it were a general obligation borrowing, it's not really a dollar threshold. It tends to be whether it's for a year or more. Um, sometimes with like highway equipment borrowing, uh, you don't need to do a vote in that instance, even if it is for longer than a year. But generally, the general obligation threshold is uh, is time, not money or amount of the borrowing. So I think it's a great idea that we come up with some sort of mutual understanding because our uh, the advice that the town receives is is slightly different from both the town lawyer and from the Vermont League of Cities and Towns. So um, with the general, yeah. what are you talking about with the general obligation bonds? Well, it's where the authority, what kind of authority lies for, for borrowing. And I think that, that the crux of that, that so, Clearly, I'm not a lawyer and I'm just going on recollection, but I think the crux is the different interpretation about whether the town, whether ultimately borrowing might be backed by the full faith and credit of the town. Yeah. And so, well, I, and, so I, and the, the definition of the legislative body clearly being the select board and nothing else. Yeah, I, but there's specific language in the statute that says it is not subject to the other provisions that include that it um, be secured by the general tax. I'm I'm confident in that, that a revenue borrowing is not secured by the full faith and credit, and it doesn't contribute to the overall uh, debt limitations on the town. That's specific in the statute. Um, I agree, the legislative body um, is certainly um, open for interpretation. I would just say that in the context of 
of subchapter two and what the electric commission does as far as legislating for the electric department, that that's a better fit for the electric commission than it is for the select board. But I would just want to repeat, there is no definitive answer for this. Uh, the best way to handle it is to figure out between the select board and the electric commission, what you guys are comfortable with as a single municipal corporation. Okay. And then for you to be aware with where you choose to draw the line is the amount of activity there's going to be. That, that will, I think, influence the practicality of, mm -hmm. of wherever you'd like to draw the line. And I think if we were saying, we'd probably say, as it, you know, we, renewal of our line of credit that we've got, right. that, that's silly. You know, right. I mean, that, I would think. And then now the question is with the routine annual capital expenditures that we're doing, that would also seem a bit excessive, especially if we're borrowing or in, in for, for a, tr a truck, you know, it's a quarter million dollars for a truck or something. And that would seem like it, it, that would also be excessive. Then the question, so what's the threshold? Right. The Yellow Barn Project's creating a new threshold right. for all of us, but, you know, we're, we're a part of it here. The bigger part of it. So, you know, do you, do you just pick a draft? I, I, you know, if you've got a draft circulated, yeah. we can start talking about that. I think, you know, what, we wanted to make sure that we didn't need to go and get a town vote on things. I, I think, you know, my, my read, and I, evidently I was reading the wrong section of the definition, but um, of legislative body, but there's no question that it's not of recourse to the town. It's 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 the utilities revenue. And as a practical matter, a bank, first of all, our assets are about 10 million. They're a little over 10 million. So that's a pressure. You know, we're I I I can't imagine that we're gonna be borrowed anywhere as close to half of that, let alone more than half of that. Um, but second of all, so, the lenders to be looking at our revenue and our, you know, our other costs before they lend us money, and they're not going to lend us anything approaching that because we wouldn't be able to repay. Right. And the project well, right now, the line of credit has to get renewed in in right now. That's what's on our agenda, and that's just renewing what we put in place last year. And then the wall cut recovery will need a lot of money. We may get Mike's working hard to get it, get the money back, but we're going to have to spend money before we do all the back. So we're going to have to borrow for the for the Walcott recovery, and then we're going to have to borrow for Yellow Barn, and then we're going to have to borrow for all the little bits and nats. And we've been because we're under pressure right now. Mike's been holding off. We have a lot of deferred stuff. Yes. And everybody's busy. The crew's busy, but. It's kind of building. So that's it. If you're thinking through, that's what's coming down the line. And there's some stuff that isn't even coming. So, so on the agenda tonight, we've got the two finalist banks right. presenting, you know, well, how, they would like Maybe it, you know. there may be another yeah. possibility yeah. too. I know we're definitely in the world. Our, our number one agenda activity is how do we borrow the best way to move around it? So this is right now. Can we cut any of those? Yeah. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. What's that? Thank you. Thank we're you. good with you. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Bye. Um, I would also note um, that Beth has already joined us. I'm not sure exactly at the time, but a little bit ago. I bet. Mike, yeah. can you clarify when you when you said you our total assets are well north of ten million? Yeah, I mean we'll get hydro alone, that facility is probably close to ten million. Yep. Um, I'm, just, I'm just seeing the ten five on there. Ten five. Yep. And we have three hundred and twenty five miles line that would cost at least a hundred thousand dollars. But that's not, no, but that's not but this that is technically the liquid. I just want to make sure there was the discrepancy you yeah. look at balance sheet versus Liquids. Well, that clears things up. I'm happy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>
But I think the most important thing is that there is a recourse to the town. It's just good. Okay. Um, yeah. Sorry. Um, okay. The next item on the agenda is financing. Who will the hydro repairs and the substation upgrades and so uh, it wasn't clear to me, Mike. So is it is our Tina is Tina joining us? Tina is gonna zoom in. Okay. And I, I can tell her we're ready for you now. And okay. then Holly, she represents Union Bank, and then Holly's gonna come in from later. Yes. Yeah. <coughs> what would I give her five minutes morning? <laughs> Did you forget? Well, we kind of landed in a hurry there. <laughs> She'll jump in. She's been waiting. <laughs> Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Hi, this is Tina. Hi, Tina, Mike here, and Board of Commissioners, and we're here to discuss uh, potential loans with you and your team. Uh, with okay. my okay. So what questions do you have for me that I can help answer? Roger, right on one of the commissioners. And, you know, first, thank you for all the work you've done, the different submissions. Mike passed them along to us and you'd expect, and we appreciate the work. One of the things that I wanted to ask is often, you know, when you have people ask you questions um, and then it goes back and forth in writing, sometimes we, if we were sitting face to face or on a Zoom call like this, you might tell us what we're asking for isn't the smartest thing to do. And that, you know, as you've gained an understanding of what it is we're trying to finance, um, do you feel like what you've proposed is meeting our needs the best and fitting what you what you can offer the best? And, I do. You know, and probably the most straight, you know, the, the, the most straightforward way to approach it is, you know, we have the Walcott situation and then we have a substation project that we usually call the yellow barn. But the, um, so we have these two projects and on one of, on both of them, we don't exactly know how much money we're ultimately going to need in our long-term borrowing, right? I updated both <laughs> loan amounts with Tina. So she's yeah. aware they're increased. Uh, based on the cost estimates for both projects uh, just recently with contractor yeah. information and bids yeah. and you know we said last month hey well, next month we'll be able to nail down better numbers yeah and, yeah, and they're obviously all higher than what the original estimates so were. that you know they're still in the estimate phase and then the other thing is it's more like a construction loan where we don't know each month exactly how much we're gonna need, but when we need it, we need it. And so the drawdown of the loan um, is more like a construction project because they, in effect, they are construction projects. And then and then we're gonna get third party reimbursement, we hope, but we don't have no idea how much or when. So that's our world. And then we asked you questions, but none of us are bankers. So we might ask you stupid <laughs> questions. <laughs> we don't want to force you into a stupid solution. So if there's anything you think uh, we should be do doing differently than we're asking, I wanted to open with that. So I think in both scenarios with the, um, the repairs to the woke at Hydro and the upgrade to do a line of credit initially, based on your best estimates, um, we can do that up to a year and you draw on it as you need. Your interest payments will be due annually. Once it matures, we can renew that. So we can renew it as long as the project 
as long as the project continues and isn't finished for the current expense and for the capital improvement note. That's great. And so your recommendation is to stay with that line of credit until the dust settles, we've received whatever we're going to receive, spent what we're going to spend, and then flip it into a long-term a, a loan, which is what we're assuming. Yes. Otherwise, you if you did a full draw at closing, you're going to be paying interest on that, on the entire amount that you want you aren't using yet. Right. Yeah, that's exactly what we wanted to avoid. Yeah. yeah. And and with the line of credit in your proposal, I th I interpret it as um, even though it's designed for us to draw and then draw more and then draw more, if we get some reimbursement windfall in month nine, nothing includes us handing that to you and reducing our drawn balance. Correct. That's great. And that would be and then, without, would that be without penalty? No penalty, no prepayment penalty. And then what we'll do at the end, when everything is said and done, we can um, do a term note for the outstanding balance and term that out <laughs> over a 10 year period. Or it's however like long you think you need it, we could go out further than 10 years. It's, it's typically the useful life of the project. Yeah. And for our guests who spent some time to sit with us, you know, one of the questions we've gone here is what's the right term? And we haven't asked, but we're feeling like 10 years is long enough and we don't really want to go longer. Uh, clearly these assets, you know, when you do a building, you're forced by accounting conventions to use longer life. When you do a piece of equipment, you do a shorter life. And what's wall cut sort of been in a building. And so we're thinking 10 years is right. And then a substation has a life clearly longer than 10 years, but we're 30 plus. Yeah. So we might get some flack, but we're black for doing short terms. Yeah. But we figure how long we'll is start. How long has Wolf yeah. been in generating power? Ooh. 100 years. <laughs> right. No, 90 years. So, so, yeah. so hydros are an exception. Though. They run, you know, right. if you take care of them, they'll run forever. And the transmission line from the substation, like when was the last time that was upgraded? Upgrade or and the upgrade you have to do the transmission. Uh, so they're, they're, you're talking the distribution circuit between yeah. here and there. Right. That's the lower voltage. Yeah. And I would guess that line was probably built in the 60s. I was going to say, yeah. that usually my recollection for public utility accounting, the transmission line is 50 years. Yeah, wow. yeah most stuff is 30. <laughs> That's not talking about if you, know, if you have to replace it because something happens, but yeah. it's capable of, of lasting. Expected life. So why the 10-year terms? Well, it's because we feel it's more conservative. Um, to get it paid off and not, uh, the fear is that if we adopt the convention of very long term, we're just going to be growing our debt. Right. But there's no way to right. any way that it's going to be more debt. It's I mean, like the federal government. Right. You know, it's, yeah. It's, we don't like that. No, that makes I, sense. I don't, I, I hate the idea of incurring debt. And, and, and again, the DPS yeah. is, yeah. you know, yeah. I'm trying to jump in on Roger earlier and, and it isn't that we're doing anything wrong. We're just not what they want us to do. No, it's not. Um, it's and it isn't, it isn't the public utility commission saying this is what we want to do. It's the public advocate. So we could argue with them. I mean, we don't have to do what they say, but if we want to get rate increases improved, and they're telling us this is what we need to do. And just from a philosophical standpoint, I understand that oftentimes utilities are unique in position to take much longer outlooks on financing and it, it can be advantageous for the rate payers in the municipality to incur debt and pay it off over a long period. Again, I think it's an equity thing. It's it's a notion and it, it would apply to say <laughs> by the town that, that 
if if there's a big expenditure, not an expense, but expenditure, capital expenditure, where something's gonna last a long time, why it's and it's the same with with, with federal government, state government financing. If something's gonna last a long time, that's gonna benefit people. You know, the philosoph the philosophy is you match the costs and benefits. Mm -hmm. And if you pay for it all now, but it's gonna last for 30 years, you haven't matched the costs and benefits. Mm -hmm. Um so uh, it's not nice having it shown down our course, but it's it and especially when if you apply that logic, we were applying that logic in reverse with a good chunk of the money that we were using, uh, because it was money that had been owed, if you will, to put the pass. Um, the other thing is we <clears throat> our capital expenditures that we were using operating revenue to pay for. It is like we did it this year. We did that. We picked away, you know, how many times did I report on the conversion, the system conversion to 12470? That took us six years. So, yeah, we were spending capital, but it took six years to get that project done. Well, if we're borrowing for 10, we're kind of almost talking comparables in my mind and not incurring debt. So, so, so anyway, that's how we did it. But we're being forced to look this room. And it's what it was six for six point. What were your numbers, Tina, for percentages? Um, so for the woke up project, that was related to FUD, the flood. Yeah. And so the bank has been offering for our full banking relationship municipalities a rate of four point seven five, which is very competitive in this environment. Um, the capital improvement, since it's increased a little bit, I do need to reach out to my CFO to get an updated rate, but you're probably going to be looking at about 6% on that one. I had quoted originally 589, so it's not far off from what I had quoted on the 600. And those 10-year term loans, um, if, if we enter into the, we sign up for the term loan, um, and we want and interest rates eventually, as hopefully they will, settle back down to some level lower than six. How That's do you what handle I'm in refinancing? Yet. Yeah, how do you handle the refinancing on a ten-year term loan? So we would want to revisit the market rates at that time. So there's nothing that precludes it. There's no penalty to Correct. to request. You're not obligated to refinance it, but we can we could. Request a refinancing. Yes. Okay. Yeah. That's good. I, I think, does anyone have any other questions for you? I, I do. Uh, can you hear me? I'm not sure you can. Yeah, you can come Okay. Great. So two things. What, oh, so we're looking at two lines of credit, one for Walcott and one for capital improvement. Because I have two different interest rates. Yes. Okay. And you said it was a one-year renewable, right? So if suppose we go beyond one year or 18 months, whatever it is, what factor might happen that would make it that you'd say we're not going to renew it? I'm sorry. What was the question? The okay, last so part said, there? Uh, yeah. You said it's a one-year renewable line of credit. So at the end of a year, is there a factor that would make you say, oh, no, we're not going to renew it? Is there something that can happen? What would that be? Um, you know, if the Hardwick Electric Department financially was going bankrupt, something something to that effect, it would really have to be something drastic in order for us not to renew that. Okay. All right, I'm good. I, I, anyone, any other questions? No. Tina, thank you very much. This has thank been very you. helpful. You're very welcome. Nice to meet thank you. Thank you. Bye. Take care. Bye bye. Yes, and there's a three minute warning.
Do you want to do that before your GM report? Well, I just put that in between. Oh, okay, so we have a shuffle time. That's all. Yeah, she's waiting. If you want me to, oh, let's, let's 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 do that and stay ready. She didn't find out. We took five. Yeah. I think you can find better. I think you can. Yeah. yeah. So I I uh, apparently Eric and. Casey were talking, but Casey contacted us the other day and I talked to Lynn very briefly, but there's a bond possibility for seven year terms with a quarter percent interest and only interest for the first two years, I think were the things I got. So Beth is on that. She was gonna to speak to that briefly and tell you where she's at since getting that information. Actually, now would be good if you wanna do that. Now. <laughs> Um, we might have somebody done. I got to head out fast. Yeah, I got to pick up my Unfortunately, I've been fine. Oh, Jesus. Go get them. Bring them here. Oh, they're actually good at meeting. You should be right. Yeah. All right. Have a good night. See you. Why don't we? Um... I go ahead with that. Okay. With that. Yeah. I don't know a whole lot just yet, but the uh, follow-up email I had with the uh, gentleman from the Vermont Bonding Agency, he says we're looking at pr the whole program itself is not finalized. They hope to have it finalized in the next two to three weeks. So they're estimating the interest rate is going to be one to one and a half percent. The first two years, like Mike said, is interest only, and then it, the balance, then it's amortized over the following five years. Um, you can prepay with no penalty, um, but like I said, this is just real high level right now. So we're, I'm kind of getting into the weeds with him right now. But that that's to me, it looks very promising, and it would only this is this is a loan that was designed for. Uh, help with FEMA funds. It's not for capital additions. It's for us, it would be strictly for the Wolcott Hydro. It's kind of like they've developed this program to be a bridge between um, what you need now and what you're going to have to wait for FEMA to get. And then any FEMA monies we got would have to go back towards payment of the bond. So it's, it's a bond so that we would be drawing the full amount. We'd get I believe so, but I believe so, but that's one of the questions I have put to him that I don't have a response back yet. Okay, thank you, Beth. Hi, Holly. Uh -huh. Everyone, Holly from Community National Bank. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Welcome. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. How's everyone's day? Great. Hey, we, we thank you, Holly, for, for the work you've done, for developing the proposals, answering yeah. all the questions. Version one, version two. Yeah, one of, no, not a problem. Yeah, one um, of the things we were worried about is sometimes since we're not, none of us are bankers, that's full disclosure on the commissioner. Um, probably all of us have borrowed money though. So we think we know what we're talking about, but we actually know we don't. No. So if there's anything we've asked you that, that where you've looked and said, I wonder why they're asking it that way or trying to do it that way, there's a smarter other way to do it. We'd really love to hear that from you so that we're yeah. not, you know, we haven't just talked to some. Sometimes when you do things in email or in the mail, you, you can miss the opportunity in a conversation to say, hey, have you guys thought about it from a different point of view altogether? Yeah. So yeah, no. Two projects, I'm, one different than the other. You know, Wolk gets one thing and then, and then uh, the other projects, the other. Yeah. Yeah. You really do have a lot going on. Um, so no, your questions are fine. I'm, I'm happy to help you, you know, get through the process however I can. Um, I mean, do you want me to kind of go over the bid that I sent you um, Friday? Sure. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, that's great. Okay. So, you know, for the flooding damages, we've been doing line of credits for our municipalities at 5.15%. It is a closed end line of credit. You don't pay interest on it until you pull money off. And then that starts to amortize the interest. 
it's only on the amount you've used. So I feel like a line of credit for those flooding repairs is really the best option for um, your electric department. You're not going to be paying all this interest regardless right up front. Um, the line of credit will be here. I have asked that the, the electric department open a deposit account so that you can take the funds as you need them put them in a checking account, um, make out checks, or use our online banking to pay for the debt kind of as you as it comes. Um, it is not an open end. It's a closed end line of credit. So once you take off that chunk, then that it draws it down. Does that make sense? Um, can, I, can I ask you one question then in connection with that? We're hoping that we will get reimbursement from FEMA. Yes. Yeah reimbursement and use that reimbursement can we use that reimbursement to repay part of what we've drawn down does that free up then the balance of what we've repaid or or no it's because it's an, a closed end once you take money off and repay it you don't then get to borrow it again that's what i've got mm -hmm. yeah that's that closed end tricky clause in there. Yes, yes. We don't typically do open end line of credits for our municipalities and they are um, 12 months. So at the end of 12 months, um, you may or may not be seeing some money from FEMA. Um, I also know that Vermont Bond Bank is trying to put together options for municipalities to kind of, if they've borrowed at a bank at a higher rate, do something from them um, at a lower rate. So I'm going to keep you guys in mind. I don't know if you've ever done anything with Vermont Bond Bank. They are specific to, to municipalities, which you would qualify. So you can be, um, you actually work in concert with them. And once they decide there's a program, or do, or do you just, how does that work? Would we work directly so, with them? No, no. Um, I'm just on their email list. I just kind of get the information. Um, I talk with a lot of the municipalities that use them directly um, for different bonds. It, they kind of they pool their bonds together, and you can only lend from them twice a year, July and February, I think. Um, so they're working on something for towns that have been borrowing with these line of credits, probably at a higher rate than they can do a better rate. So. Um, like so I said, that that's great since you're out there doing things with other towns before you've done it with us. So the way that might play out, if they come up with a great program and it, it, it and it's available in February, say people might pay down their line of credit with you. Yeah, that's switch over to that and get the benefit of that lower rate. Yeah, that's their hope. Their hope is to do this to alleviate any like excess interest that these towns are going to have to pay as a result from flooding and waiting for FEMA to kind of catch up to everyone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's why it was important to me to keep your flooding repair um, funding separate from your other project that you have with the circuit upgrades <laughs> in Wolcott. So Holly, I have a question. Yes. Dude, in that process with the bond bank, the FEMA refunding or reimbursements are only for 75 cents on the dollar. Mm -hmm. So does that mean we would still end up with 25 cents on every dollar borrowed with you? Or could that land in the bond somehow? Uh, Probably how we, we should be able to do that with bond bank, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. However you however you worked that out. Like, I don't know what the program from the bond bank is going to look like yet. So I'm not sure that I have a hundred percent of the answer. Um, but you know, if you have the 1.25 um, million here and you decided to do a million with the bond bank, and then, you know, at the end of the 12 months, if you have something left with us, that still is, um, is out there, we can decide at that point to maybe turn it into a term loan, or if FEMA has promised you money, if I can have a, like a copy of a letter from them, then we can renew that line of credit. So we have a few things we can do in 12 months. Long term loan will you do? Sorry, say that again? What's the tenor of a term loan that you would do? How, what, how long will you go is the question. Yeah. Um, 
at this point, I'm not really sure because I don't really know the amount that we're talking about. I don't believe we love to go longer than 10 years on any municipal terms. That's kind of the standard that what I always get for, for anything I've tried to consider borrowing for is always a 10 year window. Yeah. Yeah. And, and everything we've been saying has been Walcott where, where it's flood related and it's recovery from the flood. Then when you go to the next project, which are the capital improvements, and then what's the recipe? Right. Oh, before we get to that, what was the, if, if we were doing that 10 year term loan right now, which we wouldn't be, but what would the interest rate be? Well, I had quoted you, um, let me look at it again. I had quoted you 6.4% for that. And that was for Walcott or for, for the, is it the same for both? That is for not the flooding repairs. So that is just for the um, upgrades to the circuit system. And, and I'm, I might not be versed on exactly. You're right. It's the non-flood money. Yes, the non-flood money. I like that. Thank you. That's my terms. <laughs> I'm unclear. Is that for a line of credit or is that for a term loan? So for your non-flood money, I gave you three options. I gave you a line of credit as an option, which will work the same as um, the first one we just talked about. So it's a closed end. Um, you'd move money <laughs> off it as you needed as the bills come in for doing your upgrades. Um, and you're only... Paying the interest, the interest is only accruing on the amount that you take at the time you take it. Like you're that doing the line of credit for 12 months really does save the electric department. Um, all that interest just impacted right off to the front. Um, and that That's line of credit is 5.96. So it's different. We, we did a special rate for the flood for the flooding victims. Yeah. And then I also gave you um, two different term options. Um, for the non-flooding funding. So I did a 10-year term amortized over 20 and then at year 10 a balloon payment, which honestly I think looks horrible. Um, I mean, I wouldn't go that route at all. Um, I think Michael had a, a similar so we're talking to you. wanted to <laughs> compare apples to apples, but I looked at that interest on the amortization. Do you have that that I sent you? And I about fell over. <laughs> well, that one's out. That yeah, I mean, I just think that's a horrible choice. Yeah. Um, but a straight 10 years, um, you know, just 10 year term, I think I did 6.4%. So you're looking at an annual payment of like more, a little more than 177,000. And in this case, the money would all come to you up front. Um, and we would park it in a deposit account, give you checks or online banking, and, and you would, you know, use it as you needed to use it. But you're paying interest on the full amount. Say that again. We would be paying interest on the full amount. Yeah. Would yes. there be yes. a opportunity to arbitrage that? In other words, would we have to keep all of it in the account at, at, at your bank? Or could we invest it in other things so that we would effectively reduce the interest rate? In other words, can we do treasury stuff? Um. In my bid, I just asked that you open an account here um, to be able to manage these funds kind of at a little more convenience level. I did offer our money market, which I know the rates are a little bit lower. If you were going to take that 1.28 million, park it all in our money market, I would give you a better rate than that. Exactly what? I'm not 100%. Um, I would say if you were going to park it all, um, and we're talking the non-flooding money. If you did the 10-year term and you parked it all in a money market here with us, which you can draw off of and use that as an operating account, money markets are not limited to transactions anymore. Um, I mean, I can very comfortably give you at least um, a one and a quarter percent variance on top of the money market rate. So you'd be earning 4% at a million dollars. Um if you don't have to keep it all here, if you wanted to do other things with that and you find rates that are better elsewhere, I'm not going to make you keep it all here. But I did say in the bid that I do ask that you open a deposit account so that you can use, you can access these funds and use it. Does that make but sense? In, but I want to make sure I understand in this, uh, 
You had suggested, I think, that we start both projects with a line of credit because that's the maximum flexibility. And then once the projects come to completion, then roll them over into a 10 year term loan. That's what we were thinking. Is, are we thinking wrong? Is that is that feeling to you like the optimal? So sequence? what? Right. So I just gave you several, I gave you several options on the non flooding money. So regardless, I think the best option in both cases is to do the line of credit, do the line of credits for now for 12 months In 12 months, we'll see where you are. And then we can turn them into term loans. Um, that's, that's how I think this would work the best for your electric department. Um, with that said, what I quoted you for the 10 year term at 6.4%, that's not choosing a line of credit for the non flooding money. That's just <laughs> taking those funds and getting a term loan. Gotcha. I do feel that the best option is line of credits for both. And then at the end of 12 months, kind of see where you're at. Right. If, if we were to do the 10 year note, I'd, uh... I think I understood you to say that we could put the money into a money market account. Yes. That right now would be earning four percent. So that's that's pulling the effective interest rate down to two point four percent. Sure. Better. Yep. We did zero. But no. Better, no, 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 let me let me let me mm -hmm. let me just see where we're. It it is better, but it depends on. I'm just trying to understand what the option is, and then. And then you said, though, that if we also, if we were doing that, the interest rate on the loan itself would be lower than 6.4%. Is that, did I understand that correctly or not? No, if you do a 10 year term loan, the rate is 6.4%. Okay. Okay. Yep. Yep. But um, what I'm offering you is if you wanted to do that and all that 1.28 million has to go somewhere, put it in a money market here and our money market rates are tiered. And I think I included them in our bid. And what I would do, because that's such a high balance, I would offer you an additional interest of one and a quarter on whatever the tier. So at over a million, at over a million right now, our money market's 2.25. And I'm offering you one and a quarter on top of that. So that would be, do I need a calculator? Oh, that's good. You know. Yeah. So it would be, it would be three and a half. Did I do that math right? One and a quarter on top of that top tier. So not four, three and a half. Okay. Yeah. 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 I think so too. This has been very helpful. Yeah. Thank you for sharing your evening with us. Thank you. Yeah. No, it's not a problem. Um, I'm really available if you have any other questions. Set. Well, set. Thank you so much. Thank you, Holly. All right. Are you done with me? Yeah, but I'll be I'll be circling <laughs> back with you for sure. All right. Thank you so much. Have a good rest of your evening. And please reach out if you have any other questions. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. You too. Thanks. Shall we stay on the subject of the financing? She threw bond bank brewings out there. She, yeah. Well, that's... That's great. That's, That's good. Awesome. That's good. So she's keeping on top of what options are, um, which is which is it's good to have a banker who does and who can. Uh, but it's it, I mean everybody's saying the line of credit. And yes, I agree with you, Roger. That zero is better than uh, <laughs> <laughs> than arbitrage. Yeah. So the bond too. No, we can do that. I was thinking later on. In any case, we'll go to a term note. Even if we're oh. going to a term note when the rates are higher, we want to be sure, especially when the, if the rates are higher. If the bond bank comes through, the bond bank's only going to come through on Wilkin anyway. So we're going to have right. But one of the things that, and made this point, Roger, is that with Wilkin, because if we're splitting things, we can't 
say, oh, we underestimated here, we overestimated there, so we should be absolutely certain on the Wolcott piece to do it as high as we can justify because we're not paying interest on it until we use it. If we don't use it all, we don't pay interest on the part that we don't use, but we want to be sure to have and, uh, be able to borrow everything that we need to borrow. Will the liability affect our ability to negotiate terms for circuit upgrades? I don't think so. Okay. I don't think so, especially if we're doing it with the same bank. Yeah. So, Mike, did we read everything? <laughs> Lynn's taking great notes. Did we read it all right that Union Bank is is more competitive? Union Bank is lower rates. Union Bank is lower rates. Not more competitive. That's that's lower wage. Lower rates. Which I expect. I mean, we've been doing business with them for decades and decades. Oh, okay. Eric, Eric had a question, and I would like him to be involved in this. I'm just topic. curious if you also like. It sounds like the Vermont Bank bond bank thing, which is just coming up, right? That isn't even finalized. That's a is interesting. But have you also looked to the bond bank for the circuit upgrade? Are we? We just started talking about the bond bank Friday. Yeah, I, I, the impression that I had from what Beth said was that the bond bank money was just available for the flood. That's mm -hmm. that program. Oh, that's that program. Yeah, for, that was, program. For example, you guys said we have two bonds still with the Vermont bond bank. Yeah, and the yeah. Part, separately as well. Okay, well, then we should definitely be looking so, at that in terms of, of the term. Right. So, right. Beth, you should. As you're in contact with them, you should push them on what what's available for the other project, not flood. But but to Roger's to your point, Roger, about it's better to have zero interest than to be paying even a really low interest rate. That's on what the pattern of utilization is going to be. Yep. Because if we're paying a higher interest rate on the amounts that we borrow. Our total interest costs may be lower if we've got a really, you know, if we're looking at a 1% rate or something like that, mm -hmm. um, it, it may be lower to just borrow the whole amount. Or we do what the other municipalities are already doing, which is we get a line of credit. Let's imagine now we choose Union Bank because their, their rates are lower. And and we we use that a little bit a lot for a little while for a little longer but it, as soon as the bond bank situation is available on the schedule we will we, we roll over into that well that's the other and, and beth maybe when you're looking at this um the comment was made that that the bond bank borrowing is either in february or july so if there are time limits on that is that your, been your experience yeah that's what <laughs> Yeah, they do them twice a year, but that's for the regular bond program. Right. So that's different from okay. this flood reading. Right, but I'm saying yeah. of the yeah. other, the other right, the capital improvement, mm -hmm. we would have it. You have to plan ahead. We would have to plan ahead, and it may not match when we need the funds. In other words, we sure. may we may need some funds before yep. we could tap into that in any case. True. So in the ideal, the, the ideal world would be both of these projects, once they mature and we know how much long-term money we need, roll into a bond bank program. One's flood related, one's not flood. And it rolls into a program that has low interest rates, lower than the banks. Can lower than commercial rates. But we start with the banks yeah. on the line of credit. Yeah. Right? And with union funding. Probably, Probably but until we until we know those those offers have time limits on them, interest rates are changing. And so once we're ready to borrow, then we're gonna need to find out where are they you know exactly numbers? what's what's on offer at that point. It's their number then. Yeah. Um, so my guess is it's gonna be lower. Just yep. um, they we've had a relationship with them for you guys are with Union too, right? The town has quite a carries quite a speed in the We keep coming up with other financial institutions, but are we talking about CDFIs, the state? Mm -hmm. CDFIs, the community development financial. It's like Visa, I think. 
Looks like there's Community Capital of Vermont and Barrie, Northern Capital Investment Corporation, St. J, Northern Lakes Credit Union, St. J. It's just a different, different yeah. federal recognition of financial institution that I think is usually more um, tiered or geared towards municipalities, infrastructure projects. NCIC is on a little bit of a rocky territory. I mean, you ought to, yeah, you ought to. You have to check to see if the question is, would they lend to yep. it? Yeah. With, with the the for the projects, projects yep. Fit. Yep. And, and the other is, is <laughs> what kind of borrowing do they offer? Is it strictly a bond? Or no, bonds. What is the difference? Yeah, but no, no, when I say bond, is it a term, is it a term loan or is it oh, or do they offer or, 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 or something that would function like the line of credit or construction loan? I think it's community development financial institutions are specialized community-based financial institutions with the primary mission of promoting economic development by providing financial products and services to people in the community and not to by traditional financial institutions, particularly in low-income communities. CDFIs include community development banks, credit unions, non-regulated institutions, and non-profit loan funds or venture capital funds. But I think what perhaps more is just to recommend these people have we approached them before. So well, we're just starting to your first, first thing yeah, no. was economic development. That's not us. Yeah. Sure. So but I, I do think they do infrastructure projects. I don't know. Are you volunteering the check? I mean, if that can, that would be easier. Why don't you send why don't you send up yep. the names of the institutions sure. and yep. she can bring them? The the two that that um I have some experience with are NCIC and I think Vita is a is one. I'm not sure if that was the Vermont Economic Development Authority. And how quickly and what paperwork and all of that? Yeah, that? yeah, it, they're like a bank. They're like a bank. They're like a bank. Um, but they're uh, and also they occasionally have access to grant funds as well. So it's, it's just another another form of institution. To yeah, be a no, better this we can get grants. That's that's yeah. even better. And I would argue that the uh, <laughs> too, you know the circuit upgrade is really for an economic development project. Could argue by because it's being driven to boost the yeah. old bar. Right. I mean, if that's really what we need to do, I mean, the reason it's not just the yellow barn but also the that, that doesn't that provide any excess capacity for future development of that. It's nice. Right, we're the so the circuit is getting basically maxed out for its voltage level. We're going to the last, uh, really the last distribution circuit capacity that we can carry at this voltage on our system on that circuit. And the next higher standard uh, transformer power transformer rating is what we're going to. Um, so to go beyond that would be a whole nother, I mean, we'd have to rebuild the whole system. Every transformer would have to be changed. Every insulator would have to be changed. Every lightning arrestor would have to be changed. So I'm not sure that we, <coughs> 50 years into the future, we're probably making a 15 to 20 years. Yeah, but that's, that's still community. Yeah. And still, the whole mission of the project I, is to serve the economic development of the community. The yellow barn is going to reach. Yeah, no, it's, it's certainly worth looking into. It. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. You can dress it up. Sure, sure. There, yeah, I think there are avenues that we can explore around. At some point, we could have that conversation. But how do we like doing this? By emailing this to Beth, by emailing it to the entire group? No. To Beth and Mike. Okay, great. Um, I think one thing we have to bear in mind, and it's not that we should you know, be um, less than diligent on how to minimize the cost, is that if we're talking small differences in interest over the course of a year, if we're talking longer term borrowing, that's going to make a bigger difference. But if it's a small difference on on just for one year, I mean, what's what's a, what's a quarter of a percent? Um, probably not that much, but that's the bank that we've worked with more, isn't it? 
you yeah. and union no and uh, yeah no no I'm saying we're, they're they're already I'm thinking about some of these other entities oh. that 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 if they if they come in at at, at four point five percent on on a one year line of credit. I was thinking that they yeah I was thinking that you can because the terms there's no prepayment penalty you can. There's no harm in getting signed up with Union Bank you can, with a line of credit. You can refund you, want to. Uh, and I suspect, Miles, that the those options take won't time. have that flexibility. Yeah, they'll take time. Yeah. It was not, one thing that wasn't clear to me on Union Bank was the, did she say it was closed down? I don't think she didn't. I didn't say that. Um, so I'm expect, we should find out. That's a that's a question here for Union Bank is whether the because if it's an open end LC, then it's really a no brainer. Maybe you text her. Yeah. What's the answer? Because because then we can rebar if if we do get FEMA money. We have no idea when we need this money. Well, we've got the case. Mike's thinking pretty soon. Is there? Yes, we're we're um, <laughs> off, you know, like, um, and you've got to spend the money for, before FEMA will reimburse you anyway. So it's correct. It's in your pocket. Both best. Yeah, these two. So Some questions on who we're going to use for various parts of it. So Mike's the one who needs to tell us how quickly to. But it looks like we can be moving forward to get ready to sign. So since I gave you my report, I've met with two more contractors for the hydro. <clears throat> One of them was Friday, and uh, the numbers I gave you for the should cost seventy five thousand, not four hundred seventy five thousand. Yeah. So the four hundred seventy five thousand company is an outfit that goes. They're national. They go to like Hoover Dam. <laughs> They bring in, you know, kitchens, they bring in housing, they bring in bathroom facilities, and they put crews right there. You pay for all that. That's why it's so crazy. Here are what bids we got. Uh, but anyway, so I talked to a guy Friday uh, from Leopard Nutmeg. He said, yeah, your, your number, 75 or less, we will be able to do that. So that's, that's great. real good. And I also got... She says no, not open ended. So they're both no, open -ended. not open ended. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, and also the control and protection systems. So I had, I think I've spoke to you all about this before. Dennis, uh, our previous contractor who installed and worked on our old system that went down the river, said. Uh, Few years ago, hey, you know, you want to start looking at a new system. This is getting older, parts are getting hard to find. I said, okay, well, how much are we talking for a new system? He said, oh, probably 110, 115,000. So, okay, give me a proposal. And then he retired. <laughs> so, I had a guy in there today. Uh, he started, he worked for 15 years in the nuclear industry, wind industry, control and protection technician, started his own business. He studies systems all over New England. He came in today and looked at ours, and I said, "Okay, so what kind of number are you talking about?" He's like, "Ah, 130,000, 130, oh, So that's going to be a much lower number overall with both of those reductions in Wolken. So, right? so your total of seven seventy-five, the four seventy-five drops to one fifty. Or less. So what's the total out of uh, pardon me? The 475 drops to 75. I thought you would put the 75 you in. Put the 75 oh, I did use 75. Yeah. 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 Because that's what I thought I should put. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. But so the one in the control protection system looks a little better. If you would a use a lot better. Yeah. 325. Yeah, we had a 60 so might be down and a 3.5%. So yeah. So we should still though, because of the Oh, oh, I don't right. have a bid yet. I'm just telling you. Yeah, that no, no, but I'm thinking that if we're, if we are going to do the line of credit, I think we should borrow as much as we should do the line of credit for as much as we can do it for. You know, reasonably. Sure. Do it. What did they What did they propose? Remind us. And their two proposals. What was the size of the line of credit? 
I increased them by these number. I've, they're both like 1.2 million now instead of both 600,000. Okay. And I also talked to them about perhaps adding a line truck because we are in desperate need of a line truck. And that's another 350,000. Okay, but the line truck. Okay. <laughs> a line truck. What? The, the line truck we're going to pay for up front. Well, the last one we got, we did a 10 year note. But that's my point. We want a note on it. We don't want a line of credit on it. Gotcha. Yes, I agree. Yeah, it'll be secure. It'll be a note secure. Yeah, but if we were doing it, that's going to be a secured loan. That should right. be right. If you're going to do a 10 year from the beginning note on the non flood costs, we could have buried it in there and clumped it all into one loan, as I was saying. But I think, but on, on a truck, I think we need to think about if we can get a lower rate because they can take a security interest in sure. the truck. Now, going back, their information. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, vehicles, trucks, things like that are, are financeable and they're secured by the. Love to do. Right. So, and you've done tons. Sure. And so you've been kind of doing that again, unless it's. Much higher cost, in which case. Well, the last truck we bought that was two hundred and twenty-one. I meant the interest rate. Yeah. Oh, so the interest rate is like nothing. Yeah. And how many years is it going to take to get a truck? Uh, a little over a year. That's not that bad. They were eight okay. months, probably. All right. So, so then, so I mean, you're not going to borrow until. Right. But there is a question that taking the thread of thought that you had there that we should perhaps build upon is he's been holding off on the other projects. And so are there a handful of other projects that add up to some number? And so the size of the non woke <coughs> line of credit and the intent of the non, non woke line of credit maybe should be at capital for all the capital projects, not vehicles, not right. Market. Except that there's an issue of capacity, which is if you're hiring crews, you know, outside crews at a premium price, because that's the nature of the beast, because someone has a specific project like the yellow barn, where the work needs to be done at a certain time. And we only have so many you know, and there's that, and there's the broadband, that even if we can borrow to do other projects, it may it may not be the time to be implementing them. <laughs> so, it, right. you know, it, if, it, if, if the project makes sense, if it's something it, that we can do, that we're capable of doing, especially with the costs of so much stuff going up, and I'm going to guess that these prices are not sticky downward. You yeah, know, not that they are. You know, they are sticky downward. They're not going to come down. Right. Um, so that. They're only going to stay where they are or go up. Uh, I right. So, for example, the uh, I got two budgetary prices on the substation transformer we're going to need for the old barn. I got one in January it was four hundred and fifty thousand. I got one a couple of weeks ago, five hundred and twelve. So it's just going up. So, did anybody have a problem with the with the idea? Thinking about, and I know I was calling it the yellow bar. What if we don't call it, don't make it single project specific and instead make it the uh, other capital projects, not vehicles, but other capital yeah. projects? So we've got the Walcott line of credit, and then we've got the yeah. other capital projects line of credit. Well, and I think that's the way the banks look at it. Both of them yeah. refer to capital improvements. They don't care about the difference. That seems like a good way to go. Sounds good to me. Yeah. 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 I don't know how much we want to borrow. How much we want to do. But I, I, yeah, I mean, so long as we have enough in the line of credit and and the project is feasible from our ability to do it. Yeah. Um, and that we're and that we're not because we can borrow, we're not doing it early. <coughs> To pay a premium for for other parts of it um, doesn't make. So, um, will you, with the timing, it feels like we might need a special meeting. When you get the final documents in for from Union Bank, assuming it's Union Bank. Well, but they get the bond 
Yeah, I'm going to let Beth do her thing and say wherever we are. We'll have another discussion at our regular meeting. See where I don't think anything's going to go off the charts when we're sure. in the between. You'll them. tell us. And then I'll have 99% of all our stuff named down. And we still have the 200K sitting there if I get it. That we do have to get tonight. We already have that. Oh, you're done. With the you rest, we'll that two meetings. Okay. Good. You were no Oh, yeah. I don't think you were here. Right. So, I don't know if now's the time, whatever. I'm just thinking generally about this sort of thing that's in the of alarm. And I understand that it was in the IRP as part of a five year plan or something that's been in there. Um, but just, so it just seems like an astounding amount of money to do this. You know, these numbers are just coming in like last week and they're still getting updated this week. And um, I'll just say from the project point of view, we have zero budget for this because this is a project, this was an expense that I anticipated just came up this summer. So that's where we're at. And from a, just as a town park resident point of view, like a huge expense on the electric, even like, you know, even with a cost sharing thing that is left in the electric department seems huge. And I'm just wondering, Why we do, do we have to do it? Like, is there some other path forward? Well, Mike's the best person technically to answer that, but I would, my experience would tell me from hearing the stories about the Highland Center and such projects is, the first thing, first determinant of do you have to do it is what if project engineers said the electric service requirements are. Right. What, what do you need? And, they, and they've they been steady on that for a couple of years. They've been steady and really high. Yep. Just yeah. like the Highland Center. Yeah. Really high. And the Highland Center has never used anything close to what they. Hmm. So this is a conversation I had with Mike about a long time ago, but I, I don't know how to navigate that. Yeah. Right. No, that's so the, the origin, the, the original request for a service there was for 1,500 kilo, 1.5 megawatts. And I said, you're out of your mind. And we ran a comparison to similar buildings and said, hey, they're using the, these three facilities are using one lot per square foot. You're proposing uh, well, why, why do you need 12 if you're doing this similar? It should be similar. And nobody could give a good answer. That's what our calculations show. It's After going down many paths of the river, we finally came to a point where everybody, and I sent this in an email today, I don't know if you got it or not. But we came to a point where everybody finally agreed, okay, yeah, we can do it with 300 kW capacity. And I said, great. I said, I have a transformer as well. It's rated for that. So we won't get into the whole 70 plus weeks of delivery on a transformer. Fantastic. I thought that was just for um, initial temporary service. That's all I remember. More into that before. later, later on. For yeah. And then in our discussions this past summer, it morphed back to, nope, we need a thousand. The thousand has been the engineer's opinion for at least since last November. Yeah, well, the first, I still have the paperwork. It's 1.5 megawatts is what was originally. So, well, but so one megawatt, <laughs> one megawatt, right number or not. Well, but at the, end of the, at the end of the day, a customer comes to us and says, I need X. We can offer an, 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 an opinion that we, we think you could manage with less and it'll cost you less. But at the end of the day, it's the customer's decision as to, as to what they want to put in. But to go to your point about do we, do we really need the upgrade? If we didn't need the upgrade, but the accelerator is still going in with its load, then all of it is on the accelerator, I think. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's it, by virtue of the facts, that we think we will need the upgrade. So that's what causes yes. that's what causes the cost splitting. Is is it's that been in the plan. It, it's been in the plan. So we're just we, moving it up the timeline. 
we're moving it up the timeline. And so that's that's why I think what is it an 80-20 split? Yeah. That's why that was the accelerator is only paying 20% and HED is paying 80% because it's something that we would have done. If it's something that we wouldn't have except that we wouldn't have done it until five years from now. Um and that, that dates them slightly, you know, the old IRP had a certain date. It might have moved out further in the next one because the load hasn't been growing as much as we had thought it might have done. But my point is, is that without that in the plan and thinking that we are going to need to do it, then it would be entirely on the project driving it. And so that, that doesn't help you keep your costs down. No, I just was, they just, yeah, I just need to voice that like it yeah. just seems like two million dollars seems like a really big amount on a, what's the head budget? It's like six million or something for a year. Our annual budget is six and a half. Is that it? Yeah. So two million dollar project, it's a pretty big project, right? It's 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 a big project, but it's a project again because life of the assets right. that would last for thirty years or more. He's, yeah. Yeah. You know, maybe 50 years. And yeah. so if you spread it out over that, the annual cost, of, I don't know what right. the annual cost is, but it's not, not anywhere as close. You know, it's, it's not such a big number. Yeah. Well, if you just, if you just did, if you say 30 years, like, we're talking $2 million, just yeah. let's do $2 million in 50 years, because I can do that. In my head. Okay, so 50 into 2 million is 40,000 a year. For 30 years. Yeah. 66, okay. 66, plus year. interest on a $7 million budget. That's, 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 that's not yeah. a, that's not a big deal. Yeah. So I think that's, the, it's not the capital price. Right. It's, it's the annual cost. Sure. And, and that would only happen, presumably the load has grown. So you have more revenue coming in. So it's going to be on a bigger budget. Uh, I thought that the income didn't help. The income it will help. It depends. Okay, the capital costs. This money. There's going to be a contribution to. At the same time, the there's going to be costs for the energy and that the projects are using. But it's not like so that's sort of a wash. You know, actually, we, we, we hope, we hope well, that. Well, no, you, you contribute to the overhead. Yeah. You contribute to the overhead, but but not to the not to the energy. Not to the energy. there's some contribution, the but the contribution isn't as big as the revenue. Right, the energy and the capacity the that we can yeah. provide is close to a wash. You don't make much money on a kilowatt hour. You don't want, but you do you make a little. On an incremental kilowatt, you do. Like half of what we charge a ratepayer is the cost of the energy, and and then half of it is contributing to getting it made here, our transmission, getting it through our system. Right. We take so we have stack pieces. Very much. If, if a large industrial user comes in and pops up when we've had something, it definitely, it definitely is a big economic benefit. All the rate payers benefit because it absorbs wow. overhead they would have been absorbed. Okay. So there's no question that, that as long as there's new incremental volume. And as long as there aren't co it it is is a costs associated with it. Yeah. But the nature of our business is variable costs and fixed costs. We're about half and half. Right, but but if the reason the reason for the user on, on the new extension for the customer to pay for that additional capital cost is so that it matches. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Because otherwise, you have the additional cost that, that's coming. So on a kilowatt hour that we sell to you at your house, Eric, it's like 18 cents for that kilowatt hour. So roughly nine cents of that is our cost to buy it. Then we have uh, New England transmission fees that take more of it. Then we have Vermont transmission fees. We have there. Then we have system losses that take away from it. So there's, you know, each of these is a chunk that chops down to not... 18 cents is what I'm getting at. We don't we don't make the other nine cents we pay for the power. There's a lot more that can be found. Three cents. So yeah, we might get two cents in the end. Yeah. No, it's more, it's 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 more than that. But the, 
It is with the, with fee. the monthly account fees yeah. that goes to our. It, it also depends. Yeah. Uh, can we get into the nitty gritty of the analysis? Right. It, also depends, price. it depends on the on the load pattern because yeah. if, if the new user is on peak and is on coincident peak with ISO New England at the hammers, then our transmission costs for the whole system go up. It's not just in proportion right. to that load because it, it makes us more coincident. So, uh, so, so we pay more. So, it, so it's, it's, hard. it's not simple. It, it's not something you can just say off the top of your head, it's two cents, it's four cents, it's this, it's that. It, it probably is a benefit, but without knowing more, you don't know, you, it's hard to quantify. So you have to make a set of assumptions. And that's it's, not something that, that PTD would attempt to do for a project of this size. It would be a monthly equation. What's the incremental energy? What What is the net additional kilowatt hours? And the application for a thousand kVA. No, no, that's load. That's that's right. that's the load. That's so if they if they, um, I have I, no idea. I have no idea what the retail store will be. I no imagine, I imagine it's negligible. Right. The other, right. So the other, if it's comparable, you know, if I proportion it with the existing um, facility at the food venture. Um, I'm guessing this will maybe be five to seven thousand dollars a month. So that's, that's cool. good. Yeah. So you, so that's but that's, at, that's pretty big. Yeah, what are you using the electricity for you know? <laughs> So Did you look at the, the spreadsheet that I sent? Because I was assuming I haven't looked at your so so I my assumption is way off that because I was assuming if we're asking for a thousand kPa, maybe we're using half of that. No, no, that's just your load. Yeah, right. I don't think you're even going to use half of it. My first if, if I when I calculate out half of it, that's fifty thousand dollars. Oh no way. No way. What, it's 500. What, so what what what's in how much refrigeration? A lot of refrigeration. That's the biggest thing. Freezers, freezers, and, and refrigeration. Those are the, the big users, right? Yeah. yeah. But you are yeah, well, presumably it's, it's square, square, right? fairly right. efficient refrigeration. <laughs> that's right. Brand new. Um, five to seven grand. It would five to seven grand a month. So, so is that? Is there going to be a lot of air conditioning? Are they still going to be a lot of air conditioning? Uh, well, it, it, there's going to be a net cooling, yeah, not a net heating. So, yes, because there's, I guess, there's all this cooling for the keeping things cool. Coolers. That's the biggest. That's not going to. That's not leaking in. I mean, that's getting off heat in the building. It's not well outside. It's getting out. so wherever it's yeah. being vented, but it's, it's not. I, you know, without without I, without knowing yeah. what. I but just, it, I, yeah, I mean, I guess. But that makes it even more it, that perplexing. Makes, that makes it perplexing and that's seemingly ridiculous. I feel the same way. Seven thousand dollars would be sixty thousand kilowatt hours a month. No way. It's, it's, yeah. That's a lot. So like if you benchmark it to what the cheese boys do up in the hill, you know, that's I could do that. Huge refrigeration. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you can look at this cold. Cold. right? And I did those. Yeah. I compared those when I was doing the original argument yeah. when they wanted 1.5 megawatts because it was way no below what they. Now the only problem there's two two issues. Number one is if you were this gargantuan user, God help you with how you're going to pay your electric bill. You're, you're right. That would change the economics of Harvard Electric. Yeah. Or if somebody landed and was going to use that much electricity, I hope you're not. But, but you're right. If you are, then yeah, fifty thousand dollar bill a month. What would be? We yeah. should talk. We should figure out if we don't have anybody like that. So, so fifty. I mean, I think I. You know, I may have used totally wrong numbers, but I was thinking like, well, if we have, what if we use half the power that that we're asking for for the capacity, and and I use I look like you use seven hundred. Hours in a month, like seven twenties or something. So that was me. I just did seven thousand uh, seven thousand dollars divided by twelve cents a kilowatt hour. It's Sixty thousand. 
in long hours, right? Isn't that right? Yeah, that's right. 60,000 times 12. <coughs> We're asking for a thousand kilowatts, right? Yeah. So you get, thousand, that's only six hours for sixty, right? Right. But having a having a capacity of a thousand kW, that's for one fifteen minute window in the thirty day. We will deliver you up to one thousand kW for any interval or all intervals if you want. Yeah. But you're not going to use a thousand kilowatts all the time. For example, the other project we were talking about previously, <laughs> we put in a 750 kVA transformer. We built the whole circuit up. Of course, money was no object to those people. And their maximum demand that I've ever seen up there is about 105 kV on the 750. And I had the same arguments with them that I tried having with their engineers. Oh, so is yes. there any way to navigate? So a seven fold error. In yeah. engineering, yeah. right? So, it, is this yeah. a safety margin that is? Well, wait, wait, can I, <laughs> let me just add something to this since I've done this so many times. So, yeah, I'm Michael, we, we need you. The I was saying that the thousand kW they're looking for is probably the total connected load of everything, right? And you know, so you take a 10 horsepower motor and say, well, that's 10 kW, but in reality, it's a 10 horsepower motor because you need. 6kw but the next size is 10 so you put a 10kw motor in so you've got to, everything is always oversized by a factor because you you can't just get exactly what you need so you get the next biggest size and then the usage factor is usually very low compared to the peak demand of the equipment so and i'll just give kind of as an example because i work with them so long but we could put an application in for a building that's 2000 amps for a residential building and kind of come back and say we're going to give you 400 amps because they can give you what they know you're going to use, but the engineer has to design everything according to the National Electric Code. So he's adding up all his loads and all his substations, all his panels. And when he's done, it's a tremendous number. But you rarely, in, except for special buildings, they get anywhere near that because everything's so over-designed. And I don't know what the thousand is based on, but I'd love to see that load letter just to look at it. It just seems like an enormous load for a building your refrigeration is not a big energy user. You build it well. You know, it's not like the kids are opening the door to get their, you know, their juice out every 10 minutes. It's, it's a refrigeration warehouse. You know, you do it right. And maybe they should go back and look at, hey, how can I reduce the load? Maybe I put in more insulation or reduce how much refrigeration I need. So I don't know what the background to the numbers are. But I'd love to see them. But they're and not going to use it that way. It sounds like, Michael, with your experience, too, You've got some rules of thumb. Okay, if the load is a thousand, and here's how projects then have been built. That was the first engineering estimate of all the motors of everything needed. But here's how that the service was eventually ultimately designed and delivered. Do you is that a, is there any way to get some of your expertise, your experience? I can go back. We got. We, we used to do refrigerated warehouse energy analysis for the state to give rebates. Let me ask the, my old partner if she remembers the variation between connected load and actual usage if she has it. Um, the, I don't know how much of this building now is warehouse versus retail store versus anything else from last time I looked at the drawings. Yeah, and those... Okay, Beth. Oh. Uh, yeah, that's so all that... The, I went around the circles again uh, briefly with the engineers on this 1000 and they were not going to budge. So that's at that point, I was trying to get data actually for Eric to do another comparison of what I really thought they would need. And after stumbling trying to get data because people were on vacation and whatever, and I talk about this in my email as well, I talked to our engineer in the firm. And I said, okay, well, what if they chopped their load down to 500? Yeah. And he said, nope, same results. He says, they got to get down to 300 where you were. Then everything's good to go. And if it was three, let's just pretend. And I'm not fantasizing we're really going to get there. If it was 300, what would the cost of the project? Just the site specific. It would get rid of the system. Yeah. So 
So, so how much would it reduce? It would take it from what million to what? Yeah, uh, one point whatever, two million, call it, down to I think it's two hundred thousand or less. I don't know. I haven't seen those numbers yet. Okay. But, so, so the two so million, one point eight million dollars savings. Yeah. No, 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 no. The two million is twenty okay. split. So okay. they're only getting twenty percent. Okay. So it's four hundred thousand is against two hundred thousand. Right. Well, no. I don't think it's no, the two hundred to give me anyway. The project specific, the stuff at the that's what, that's what I'm saying. It's four hundred thousand for them. No, it was four hundred plus two hundred. He's saying right. It's two hundred plus oh, okay. two hundred. So, oh, so okay, success two hundred. And it's three hundred yet. Okay, we're still waiting on that, right? Yes. Yeah. Is that something that we can get them? Yeah, they're both them? get. They both should have. If they weren't done today, they'll be done. And with with. A breakdown sure. of everything. So, is there not knowing how many of this stuff works, <laughs> but just having this, you know, is there a, a, a world where we could just hook up the 3,000 or 300 KVA transformer, say we think this is going to cover it, <laughs> and see what happens? So or, there, what, no, you can't do that. No, because then. Who's responsible if something fails? Well, right. the utility put it in. Shame on them. Okay. And we'll get stuck either. No. Okay. So if your engineers tell us 300 will do it, then, you know, we're, we're good. Okay. And, that, and there lies the over engineer. There lies the problem because they're not going to, I there, guarantee you, they're not going to do it. Okay. So even though, <laughs> like in this room, we could sit here and say, we know it's never going to even use 300. But I might use 300. But I don't think it's okay. going to be is there, is there, what level drives the system upgrade? Yeah, that's Whatever right. the application the from the customer says is what we no, no, no. What's the threshold? But what, at what level What's do you get to? Oh, we got to change to do the system upgrade. Right. Oh, so so we, we've projected a 1% growth for our last IRB. <laughs> And the 300, if we went to 300 at this project, we would be just about perfect hitting our planned IRP. So if it went to 350, if, they, if, they, if, if their engineers would take it down to 350, we still need the we IRP. Still need it. Okay. But they'd have a smaller share of it because they'd be lower. Yes. Yeah, the dedicated right, percentage have, would be smaller. But HEE would still have to take that step. HEE would get clobber. Because it's just a step. It's, that's it's right. a move. That's not a that's yeah. clean. And, okay. Correct. And as a complete novice, what when when you say we would never do that because HED would hold the financial liability if it went wrong, what is the financial liability? I'm trying to understand what, what's the financial risk you're taking on versus the Sure, cost of that. So, okay, close enough. You guys go do it. We'll yeah. worry about it later. Yeah. And right. we end up losing a piece of equipment that forces us into our contingency kit configuration. And at the end of every one of our 325 miles long, we under voltage everybody and smoke everything in their houses. Right. Big money. Great. Okay. Yeah. Nothing. Big money. Yeah. Catch houses on fire. Yeah. No. Good to understand. Not doing it. <laughs> And there's not, I think I've asked you this before, and I'm not sure I totally understand, but so the, there are two circuits that are involved at that site, is that right? There's the, there's one, you just said that, you know, you, you hit something and you hit, you have to fail over the other circuit and then there's not enough juice. Right, so our nominal configuration, the yellow barn would be served from the hardware substation. Oh, from hardware. Yeah. In our contingency configuration, the yellow barn would still be served from the hardware substation. In our ultimate longer range plan, when we build the circuit from the yellow barn all the way to Wolcott, which is next plan, then we'll be able to feed both ways anytime. So the yellow barn could be fed in the nominal system from either substation and in the contingency configuration from either substation. This project is only getting to the yellow barn from, right. from Harvard. That next chunk will be a whole nother million plus project. 
that you're not paying for. But, <laughs> but you're but you're paying in I mean but I'm paying in yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 yes, yes. But that but that extension makes the whole system work. Right. It reduces the likelihood of, oh, sure, sure. of an outing. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's okay. so Michael, if you were in if you were in shoes, what would you what would you recommend? You know. I would recommend that I sit down with Mike. Maybe by Friday I can leave the house and not get people sick. Let's look at their load letter, look at the drawings, and if need be, we can even meet with them and just go through it with them to better understand it. I have no problem talking to the engineers. Maybe we can get them to understand that, you know, 500 is not a real number. And if it is, it is. But at least let's all be comfortable that we agree with them. Or we disagree with them. Yes. It's such it's such a hard thing because you know sometimes projects come into our world here with outside money and you try to challenge them but they have the money to burn and they burn it. That's what Highland did. Mm -hmm. But this isn't. I mean, this is it's a publicly funded project. I know. Kind of hard, right? yeah. We don't have this budget because it just yeah. came off last week. So and so this is a case where we don't have the money to burn. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah. So, but it sounds like we're not going to get our, I mean, from everything Mike's saying, we're not going to get around it. I think well, it would be great, Michael, cool. if you do have time to go through, but it sounds like you'd have to convince the, you'd have to find, um, engineers. you'd have to find power savings that brought their estimate down from 1,000% to 300. Seems unlikely. But it's not it's not good for HED, but every the more the, the product number is brought down, the less your portion shares. Yeah, if you write it down and load that 300 yes, that would be great. Yeah, but it doesn't sound like right. but, but, but if you can bring it down to 500, yeah, it's still going to cost all that stuff. Yeah. yeah, but no, 500 a, still requires the system on the ground. But it would be eliminated. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. no, no, I understand yep. that. Oh, I yeah. Right. So there are proportionate capacity out of the sub would go up to 10%. Anything that they, that you can bring them down yep. will is beneficial to the project. It, right. And, it puts it more in the chair and the hard on, all the rate payers will right. fine. That's fine. We're fine with it. And so that's relieving the project. Do you, do you have the rate the sorry, whatever Michael calls it, load sheet that you took over later? I believe I have load sheets from your engineers, yeah. So if I don't, they can certainly provide them. Absolutely. Um, yeah, because they would have done they got it. Yep. They got it. I guess I'm just wondering also in the world of like as you pointed out, you don't you always have to get the next size up. So if it, if they came out at 751 KVA, they'd probably tell you we need a thousand, right? No. Oh, they wouldn't. I wouldn't. No, I'd put in a seven fifty. I'm just saying that it's they, possible they, that their load sheet calculates out to something less than a thousand. Right? Maybe if a thousand is what they're asking. I, you don't know. But, no, it's it's also possible. This is what Mike is saying about the about the oversizing because of the standard sizing is depending upon the configuration. And if I'm if I'm talking total nonsense, Michael, correctly, but it, it depending upon the configuration because you've got multiple things of the same thing. Maybe they don't all need to be the same size. Maybe you can have some that are slightly undersized because they're all part of the configuration or something that can bring the whole thing. I don't know. So Kevin, if that made any sense to you, <laughs> or anyone else, I would ask. If I was you, I would ask your engineers what would have, what would we have to do to reduce the capacity of this project back down to three hundred k? But I mean, it, it was, was never at three hundred. It was, it was never at three hundred at all. And that was just a that in my memory, that was just you said we have a three hundred transformer. And we said, can we use that as startup because the lead time of transformer is really long just to get the lights on while we're in construction. That's what I read. I argued that 300 is all you needed 
we all agreed and then that morphed into well that'll be that'll be good enough for to get us going so that must, wasn't it any so it not, that i never agreed to yeah it must not have been there when we did the 300 i don't know so so then and i remember responding to everybody saying whoa 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 how did we get back up to 1500 and two transformers as well that was the original proposal was a 1250 and a 500 or something? It was, it was 1750 total capacity. I said, How do we get back up from 300 to, to this number? Thank you. And I got it to go down to a thousand with one transformer. That was the most recent reiteration. That's, that's where we've been fun. since our last meeting, me, you, and all them on site early this summer. Michael, it doesn't sound, you know, because we're so focused right now on the capital cost of the project and what drives the sharing and all that, we haven't talked a lot about what I would be doing, you know, building many plants over the years. I had both of these things, both the cost of the electric service installation and then the operating costs, the kilowatt hours we were going to do every year. And I actually focused way more on the kilowatt hours per year because that was you know, the burden on the p &L. and the capital project costs was kind of secondary. I, I think it would be of some value to the project you have to have at least a, a rough estimate of what your electric usage and cost is going to be annual. Like, I can't even imagine approving a project and not having my team tell me this is our electric. Yeah, and I think part of the reason that, that I don't have that information yeah. is that a project point of view, we're really supporting one bathroom. And that's going to have probably a light bulb. With it. So it's the tenants. The tenants <laughs> are going to have their own meters. So cabin's <laughs> going to have a meter for the entire middle bar except for one bathroom. And the accelerator is divided into yeah. two tenants, and they are going to each pay their bill. Yeah. All right, we're not going to, there's no common space for that accelerator. But but then what I do with that is I would then have an industry standard of cost per square foot and the company that's installing the refrigerated yeah. space would, would do a quote of, yeah, this this particular insulation level, this space, square footage, this clear height is going to be this amount per square foot I think that, to, yeah. for electricity, this many kilowatt hours. And, and you then drive it off that. So what I'm saying is- And the lighting system the same way. But what, what I'm saying is that Jasper Hill Farm and Center for Agricultural Economy may have done that because they're- Oh, the yeah, 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 I got gotcha. you. Okay. Because then you can connect the two. And, and I, I'm, what we're basically theorizing is that there's a, mis, there's a sort of ridiculous mis, mismatch here of how big this building looks to be in terms of load and how big it's really going to be. Isn't that what the load sheets would show? That's what they're supposed to do. They, they, you know, and, and then Michael can tell us the load sheets typically, you know, how, how much higher than real usage are they? Well, lighting, who cares? What's going to be? Yeah, lighting. lighting is peanuts. Refrigeration shouldn't be very much with 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 current technology. It, it, I mean, it's going to be more than in our houses, but it. So I mean, as Michael Eric can comment. Yeah, on. I think I'll, I'll I'll look at the low. If you can send me a low letter early, that's great. Um, hopefully, maybe Thursday, Friday, I'll come over. Is there a latest set of drawings that Opie has now that have been updated for what the final product is? Yeah, I mean that uh, I can. Yeah, I can get you. I think that stuff is all on Procore for right and more. See, I may be able to get you a login. Okay. But if there's hard copies at Opie's office, I'd rather work with hard copies. It's much easier. Oh, hard copy. Get it to Mike. Yeah, if you get it to me, print it out. So, just another example the, the existing venture building. That has a 1200 amp service on it. It was about 270 amps. Hmm. 207. I didn't hear what you said. The existing food venture. Oh, the food venture. 
refrigerator. Yeah, same. It's, I mean, it's typical overkill. That's why I'm so confident when I start these arguments with these engineers. It's like, you don't need that. There's no way you're ever going to use that. And they so not much. So on the other project we're talking about that happened in Greensboro, I finally got the owner, the guy that was paying the bill, all the engineers, all the site guys on the conference. And I said, look, here's all my numbers. Here's what I think you need. Why and how do you need this? And the engineers started explaining this, that, and the other thing. And I said, okay, the only thing that makes sense here is that this is a cost plus job. Is this a cost plus job? And they said, yes, it is. <laughs> and I said, okay, so does everybody on this call understand that this is a cost plus job? Yep, yep, yep. Okay, build whatever you want. They didn't care what it cost. But, yeah, right. but the yellow bar. I'm, I'm just saying those yeah. things. That's the that's other end. Of the yeah. Yeah. But you know, your example of the food venture center is interesting because that was precious dollars too. Yes, it got wasted. I agree. So, would it be helpful to understand the rationale? Like, I, I understand it in a structural context where you oversize the building because you want to plan for having a party there. During a hurricane, while there's four feet of snow, proof. and and I don't I don't understand where the caution is coming from in, in these numbers being grossly inflated. Well, you heard part of what. what well, there's two so there's just, two reasons. Just, that, in addition of running all of your all of your things at peak, it, it, yeah, just, the engineers just yeah. 100% yeah. Yeah. load. Yeah, the yeah, engineer, you know, they're professional engineers that are going to sign off on this project. Yep. And say it's good to go and, and then under code, meeting all the rules for the next 25 years. And they're not going to put their license in jeopardy for this project or that project. Right. They're going to cover their butt on the boiler plate. Okay. That's what they do. There, there are two types of engineering. One is the building engineering, which you have to do by the National Electric Code, which drags you into big numbers just because that's what the code says. That's why utilities typically provide a lot less power than what the load letter is, because they know you never use anywhere near that amount. It's really just safety on top of safety. Not that the engineer did anything wrong, but he's following the National, National Electric Code. And that's why a utility has the right to provide whatever power they think is reasonable for a building, which is almost always dramatically less than what the total load is of the building. So at some that, point, they may say, okay, yeah, that's, that's, you want. that is materially different. Than that's what not we, true. We they serve. pay us for a kilowatt. That's what we build to provide. We do. I'm just saying bigger utilities will not give people what they actually ask for, ever. So there's two things. One is the oversized on individual pieces of equipment because you got to go to the next bigger size. And then there's a National Electric Code that says, well, if that's the size of your motor, that's the size of your wire, and you add these all up, and you have to keep adding them in a certain way to come up with a big number. It's why it's so dramatically oversized on the utility side. In the building, they want those oversized wires and, and panels and transformers for safety. But in terms of how much power you really use, it's 30 to 40 percent is typical in terms of peak demand. So it may be that the engineers say, look, I'm, I'm abiding by National Electric Code. You guys can give me whatever you want to give me. It's not our responsibility. I, I think that's where we're going to end up. We can look at them to reduce their number. We're not going to get to 300, probably, if they were at 1,000. You know, maybe we can get to 600 or 500 by kind of seeing if they double-counted stuff. Like a lot of times, there's two pumps. One's primary, one's standby. They'll add both of them together in case they both run, which they shouldn't. There's a lot of duplicity in any kind of engineering. If they're special electrical engineers. Only people worse than them are structural. There's safety on top of safety. Because most fires start in the electrical wires. So they're very cautious. So happy to look at the load letter, see if we can do something to reduce it. That's great. Thank you. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Any other questions on that part of the manager's report or any other? <laughs> Anything? <else? laughs> I see Nat is putting well, on his the appetite for Nat. He's ready to eat. <laughs> I unfortunately do have another question there. I was, Mike, can you explain a little bit about the um, uh, how this project overlaps with the data's asset? Well, 
The full, all our buildings are jointly owned yep. with CCI. Right. So Hardwick happens to be a Hardwick Electric set area, so we own these buildings. They jointly attach to them as joint owners. Mm -hmm. So if we go, if we plan to do a circuit rebuild, mm -hmm. they come and do an eval engineering evaluation on everything, and they say, oh, this pole's good for us. Uh, and we say, oh, we got to change it to this or that. And then, okay, yeah, we can make that work. They work out every pole detail. On the lines where we own the poles, we set, transfer, get out of their way. Then they transfer onto the new pole as well, and they remove the old pole. That's their expense on this project. All yep. their transfer work and the removal of the old poles. Okay, and is none of that pole replacement being covered by the internet work that you cite later? Uh, it, it sounds it sounds like there's there the line crews are, are tied up. So They're right now, the, right now, the, you're on a good line, but yep. the line, the pole line that we're yep. talking about is full of fiber. Okay. There won't be any fiber. So that's not being to this pole line. No. Got it. So this is, so just to make sure I'm understanding correctly, the, the circuit upgrade is going to require moving off of existing CCI poles. Moving. We're going to build a new line. You're going to build a new line. Chop off the top of the old poles. Yep. Which makes room for the next entity to go. Otherwise, yep. the pole will be in the way. And and that particular pole route is not being touched by all of the broadband work. No, it's there's more. Hardwick has more fiber in Hardwick than any town in Vermont. Hmm. You're like the hub of guys of Route 15, 16, right. and 14, yep. all conversing here. Everybody, has, even Velcro has fiber. Right. And Velcro doesn't have a substation within 20 miles. Yeah. Okay. Oh. And the and since you started us down the road, I mean, it's good because I, I was <laughs> it's it's um as this burden is on our crews to participate in this, we're still financially whole just without our crews. I mean, our crews yes. are working, but we're happy with uh, how we're not yes, we're happy. Yep. Yeah. We're not coming up short. The internet companies are paying for all that. Sure. They do. Yep. So we're, what we're winding up is we're kind of handed, but right. we're not financially shamed. Yeah. So it, in, in a normal year, it's kind of a good thing in a way. If we're slow, it's excellent. If we're slow, it's If bad. we're super busy. So yeah, it, it's basically, it basically yep. it, as I understand it, our staff, in terms of, of our employees, are sized to the operation and maintenance of the existing system. The the and not for any large expansions, whether it's for broadband or whether it's for a major system upgrade. You know, that right. it's going to be done in a yeah. relatively short period of time. Okay, so then... It could be stretched, like Mike was talking about earlier, for what was done up in Greensboro. That was done mostly by our... By our folks, or was that mostly contractors? The survey on that other project? Yeah. We brought contractors in and put two of our crews with them. Okay. So, so that was five a, crews. So that was a combination, but that was also spread out over. That was a six month job. Right? Yeah. But, but, that, but that begs the question of the, the causer incurring the cost. Yeah. Because if, if I come into the door right after you do, why am I paying for the increased staff? Because we didn't need it before you came in. Yeah. Well, you used to build that with real case right. studies. So now real case, case on the later project here, or you know, I mean, there's options. Right. No. What about the electric chargers at the Ford dealership that came in before the yellow bond project? They never did that project. The electric oh, okay. chargers didn't do. It. Didn't do. It. Okay. Too expensive. Otherwise, that could have split. Yeah, that could have yeah. cost shifted a lot. I know they're doing something. They didn't go to level three. Super right, high. and they didn't get a new service. They're okay. adding uh, equipment onto their existing service, so they're not okay. increasing that. Yeah. Cool. But you're right. If that project had gone, that would have changed this whole equation. Yeah. So there's the, the fairness of being, yeah, being at the, the wrong place. At the wrong, wrong place, place at the wrong time. And, and <laughs> how, how friendly are we as a municipality to 
development. If, yes. if, if there's if there's already one development project going on, and I, I don't want to come in and incur the contractor upcharge. Yeah. I think some of it depends on the timing of the development, though. Also, if it's something that can be done over a longer period of time, then it can be woven into the existing system. Yep. It's when something comes in and it, and in a big lump. Yeah. It's like it. it we, we we're not in the business of building, you know, power plants. But if we were building a sure. power plant, we'd see the same kind of thing. It's, yep. It's it's. What so, about the question of the crews, like the Yellow Barn project? I shouldn't stop at hauling that. What should I call it? Go ahead. Is that right? That's fine. The Yellow Bond Project, it, we're going to use outside crews, which costs more for that project. Meanwhile, our crews will be working on broadband. No. Could you? Uh, that's the question. Let me be honest. Oh. Yes. So, yeah. is that the upset? No, yeah. it's, it's not. So, the, the upfront uh, cost that will be charged to the capital improvement project. Yep. <laughs> will include the cost of contractors. But uh, the foreman and I are already trying to devise a plan on using our own crews, supplemented by some other municipal crews, to do as much of that project as we can. Okay. So if the project ends up paying some dollars for those contractors to do their work and they only actually end up doing 50 but they'll get 50% of that cost back. But what is, what is time of the capacity of our crews such that we need the contractors. Because the speed of the project to get done. If we could pick away at it for a couple of years. So, it, so it's not the broadband, it's just the speed it's, of the project. It's also the well, I mean, that's not what I'm saying. But the, the, our plate is full right now with our existing work, yeah. existing maintenance, and hundreds of poles of broadband work to be done. Okay. We're full. So now this project comes along. It's a six-month project for five, maybe six crews. We don't even have five or six crews. So okay, now I'm, like, now I'm confused again because this, okay. this is what I asked you on the phone today when I read this. Because I'll I'll, I'll say what my is like. To the extent that we need to be going out and hiring outside crews, which are more expensive than using our own employees, I think that those costs, and if there are projects that are going on at the same time, and one is benefiting our people who are our customers, and another is benefiting more broadly outside of our service territory, the people outside the service territory should be paying the premium price, not the people inside our service territory. And so, and when I asked you that, I thought you said that the broadband is also being done with contractors. Yes. Okay, so it's not being done by because I just thought you said it was being done. Okay, by. so right. each right now we've been picking away at all the broadband work. We're behind, yeah. and we've just got uh, five or six new applications from the broadband entities. All of them, hundred poles or more. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> we're we're bringing contractors in here ASAP, or we're going to just be completely. And, and this is happening naturally. I'm just yeah. trying to understand. So HED is fully committed with operations and maintenance. That's our to do. We need contractors for make ready work for broadband, and we need contractors for the capital structures. Okay. Yeah, come in, do the job, and see you later, Jax. Yeah. And and you're right that that drives up the cost yes. for someone coming in to do a project. <laughs> development impacts, but unless but if we hired more people. That would be impacting sure. our rate payers. Yep. And we're not getting any subsidy from the people who are benefiting. No, it, 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 makes, it makes much more sense if we're fully committed for mm -hmm. our normal operations rather than farming out the crews to one driver person. So, the time frame you mentioned six months a couple of times. Um, I thought some of the lead times on some of the components were longer. They are. <clears throat> like the substation transformer will be longer. But most of the stuff that we'll need, holes, the wire, cross arms, insulators, that's all readily available. Let me, uh, and this may be again a goofy question. I'm just trying to brainstorm a little bit. If, if the transformer isn't gonna be available for a year, 
why does the poll and wire work need to be done in a shorter period of time? Why can't it be spread over the year? And then maybe some of our crews could pick up some of that. Rather. Yeah, we could we could do that. Or or the, the logical extension, just like the load question, what has to change with the project to for each in, in in our existing yeah. cruise capacity? That's a good question. I, I mean, because that's that's almost more savings than what we're talking about with yeah. the, the load. Yeah, I mean, when do you, when are your tenants moving in? That's the question. That is the question. I have to look. I actually don't know off the top of my head. But if that, if that can be, if that's a longer time frame, then yeah. that actually brings. That helps us a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So, great thing to look at. yeah, I think I should look at that and find out because I've been, yeah. Um, just off the top of my head, um, I think Wright Morrissey started their contract, their, their general contractor. I believe they signed in May. I believe they have a year to get to a point. Where, um, so May of 24, they, I believe, need to be at a point where the call attends and start doing their fit up. Ooh, yes. And then and then six months after that, they need to be complete. So it, you know, it's the November or something or they need to be complete. But at the point where tenants are trying to do fit up, they're probably going to want things like lights. Sure. But does it, will the temporary service yeah. cover things like lights? But also, well, they have a temporary construction service. Okay. Well, they, they can put in fixtures. Sure. Yeah, yeah, they can have. But at I some mean, point, probably before the tenants move in, there's probably going to be somebody that wants to test that compressor. Or absolutely. Yeah. Which I don't think is a problem. But a compressor. You know, if, our, is gonna... if our site work is all done and you guys want to run stuff up to 300 kW, we're going to run. And it sounds like we're probably not going to be That's funny. <laughs> so, which thing? Which really, this is yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, this is not exactly. It's no, just, like, it's it's not it's not the yep. and it's just the next problem. Yep. Um, in a long series of problems. Yep. But it also sounds like Michael brings up quite a material point to this conversation, which is the philosophy of the utility looking at the requested size of the service versus what what you grant them. And it sounds like there's a disconnect between. I disagree. Yeah. And I disagree yeah. with what Mike said. I've worked yeah. with multiple utilities. No. I am not put in, I'm, I'm, I'm observing that it seems like material in this conversation. We put in what the customer pays for. Yeah. All, all utilities. Now, uh, on Mike's to Mike's point, if we had a thousand KVA transformer and we knew for a fact they're never going to exceed 200 and they want us to run 12 conductors per phase. From our transformer into this switch gear, no, we're going to run one that's two hundred percent rated of that, not twelve. We'll do stuff like that to reduce our work and reduce costs. But the transformer will be there, and if they do need it, we'll add those other conductors for them. Yeah, because your long line, your large capital long line has to be there. Yeah. Well, it's still. I wouldn't. I would encourage, especially because it's an easy conversation between sure. and I yeah. I'd encourage you and Michael to look at because maybe, yeah, Mike, Mike, Michael might bring some different ideas or perspective. And there's no way we as a board, I mean, this is so far beyond our next week. But it's but Mike, it's all right when we have Mike. Yeah, absolutely. And if and if, and if you two in discussion get to a point where saying there there we're still Got belt, belts and suspenders on at this level, whatever that number is. We're adventuring. Eric, to you, you're going to say a thousand. You're going to say a thousand. That's where I think we're going to land. But I'm willing to have the discussion. Yeah, but if you, if, yeah, you got to go with what they say. Well, I'm not sure that's no. true. That's <laughs> not. That's <laughs> actually not. Well, I think there's a big difference I, between being a small municipal utility and being Con Edison, because you know they've got streets full of wires. If they made a mistake. It's no big deal for them to fix it. In our case, if we make, you know, if we push for lower and we made a mistake, that's a big deal to make a change to upgrade it. But that, 
That's it. That's yeah. the difference. I mean, if you're yeah. talking yeah. about that's John that's Edison. It. Right. Or, but I think we still need to look at their load and see if, you know, I could understand what they did from an engineer's point of view to see if there's anything in there. Have you considered building in New York? Yeah, so we're going to consolidate the chain there. We already sent our hill down. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. yeah, we don't yeah, want to do too much of yeah, that. Was, that was so, so, okay. I really appreciate everybody's engagement on this, even though, you know, most of us don't know really what we're talking about, but really do appreciate the engagement. I'm the same team. Wish we could get to the right place. Simple, easy question like uh, two nights in a row across from the post office in Greensboro. Electricity went out. Came out, fixed it, came back to the next night because it blown again. Yeah. Not a, not a problem for them. It's something wondering what it was. Yeah. So this has been a, an interesting problem to hear that. Uh, down the bend road, almost down the bend road, but there's a tap that goes up the hill to a house that actually has a driveway down to the golf course room. You know, and the iron line goes overhead one section and then it goes underground about 800 feet up to their house. And the underground section is owned by them. And last fall and last winter, we were blowing fuses up there like once a month. So, in the dead of winter, it kind of went away. It just stopped doing its thing. So, we're like, oh, what was it? The only one we answer. Well, then since then, we haven't blown a fuse up there at all. So, this last week or two, we started blowing fuses up there. I said, okay, isolate the light interesters, put it back in service. So, they're out. A couple nights later, boom, blew again. All right. Change out the transformer, put a new transformer in there. I mean, these aren't five minute jobs, but you know. So we change out, we ended up changing everything except their primary underground. And <coughs> so he's had the whole thing replaced. So it should be one. It's off, it's shut off. It's gonna be like 30,000 bucks just for the underground. Yeah, I was gonna spend some money. Sounds oh. cheap. Well, <laughs> no substation that's, upgrade for him. That's 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 not so affected a bunch of other people on that lot. What's that? When my son built his house, he doesn't matter. He put in a hundred about a thousand feet, but that expensive. But coppers. That was that was a number of years ago. Yeah, it's it's insane the cost to, compared to just a couple years ago. It's a <laughs> Okay, is there anything else? Because it is now um, 6 35. Um, is there anything else on the general manager's report that people have questions about or want to discuss? Moving on, do people have any comments or questions on the financial statements? Too late. No, but Beth, we do appreciate it. your cash flow and your cash balance reporting. You know, just everybody, we're all noting that you got us to a $300,000 cash balance now, which makes me feel a lot better. I mean, me you, too. So, is, the, is the refunding all done now? Yes. Good. I was really afraid we would be underwater, but so that's good. And, and, if, and that was six weeks ago. So right now, your cash balance is a lot lower. You want to say your cash you, balance? You went out just a little bit on me there. I didn't catch your whole phrase. Plus thousands of the good. Yeah, your cash balance yeah. is now. All we're able to see in the sheets is what it was six weeks ago. Yeah. What it is, is it now? <laughs> um, let's see. I report that to Mike every week. And last week, uh, last week it was about one hundred fifty because one hundred fifty thousand because we had to pay a couple of property taxes in our bond payments. But it'll come back up with the next um, bill payment. Customer paying their bills 
we got to go through another cycle of that right away. That's great. <laughs> is there any other business? Hearing none, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any opposition? Hearing none, we are adjourned at 6 eight, six.